This is Professor Kentop. This is section four, the last section. Yay, I know that's what you're saying now. That's okay. The last section of our second solution, solution two. And uh, in this section, we're going to look at important options to install software that may not be loaded and uh, we also want to use remote connections. So we'll start right away by uh, assuming that we don't have a software program called UFW. Uh, Uncomplicated Firewall is what that stands for. And what I want you to do is to uh, enter super user mode by entering the command sudo space super user su sudo space su and then enter the password for pg book again it should give you a prompt one of the things that you'll notice is that you have to have network connectivity to be able to do this this section so i do want you to uh, come up to where it says machine and settings and uh, you may likely have to, to take your bridged setting and change it to NAT. Another thing you may need to do after you change this setting is to come up here to system settings and when the screen comes up I want you to click into network and if this isn't turned on, I want you to turn it on. Make sure it's turned on. And then go ahead and close this. You want to use the wired connection. To test for connectivity, you want to be able to do a quick ping. So you're going to ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And if you're successful, some responses will start to roll down the line. If you see um, unavailable or something like that, if you don't see, if, unless you see something different, uh, this is, it's working. And so what I want you to do to stop this is to press Control C. And uh, that means you have connectivity. We're going to issue the clear command because we want clean screen now and let's assume that we want to install um, yeah let's assume we want to install UFW it's always a good idea to use the full apt-get command with install instead of just apt when you google a lot of options out on internet It'll say use apt install, but don't do that. Use apt get because it's going to pull from the Linux Ubuntu repository, which has the best version and the best latest updated copies of the software. And uh, what we want to do is use apt get install UFW. And if you have network connectivity, the command will run like this, and it'll say the following package is automatically installed and is no longer required. Right? So it's telling you that it's already installed. That's an important thing. What you should see is zero upgraded, zero newly installed, and zero to remove. So, yeah, that's what we want to do. I want you to highlight a line that says UFW is already the newest version. Because when you do apt-get, it's going to check with the repository to see what the newest version is. So this is a really good way of installing software. If it isn't loaded, if you don't have it, you try to run a command and it says 
command not found, you check, you go to the directories where it's supposed to be, you navigate your directory path, you use change mod commands. Well, if it's not there, it's not there. You can't can't use change mod commands. But anyway, point is I want you to highlight this, take a screenshot, and paste this into your Word document for section four. That's all we have to do for the first half of section four. I want to make sure you know how best to install software on your scientific computing platform. So, after you've taken a picture of UFW as already the newest version, what we're going to do next is use SSH to connect. So we have a machine that's sitting at, and I want you to do this, ping 146.226.249.53. When you ping, you should get some kind of response. I'm going to press Control C again. Actually, once you start connecting your PG Book VM machine to the um, internet, because you choose NAT and then you turn on the wired network interface, it's probably a good idea to turn on the firewall. So let's go ahead and uh, look up the manual for UFW to find out how to enable the UFW firewall. It could be installed, but it's not running. One way to find out is to issue the command UFW status. It says it's inactive, which means it's not running. So how do I get it running? I'm going to use the man page and uh, the manual pages for UFW and it's going to tell me after I run down there's an enable option so that's gonna that's gonna activate the UFW firewall and then if I need to I can make other adjustments I can add rules to open uh, activity but in general if I'm reaching out with this machine to connect other devices it's going to open a port. I'm not going to have a problem just because the firewall is on. But it will protect me uh, from unwanted traffic coming in. And I would advise that because if somebody can find out your IP address and they're also running this PG book, they know your, your, they know your login and password. Right? So I'm going to put UFW enable, and that's going to start the firewall. Um, and so I'm going to press Q to quit. And then I'm going to issue the command UFW enable. This is the second. This is the second option. The second screen I want you to capture in order to uh, finish this activity. Once you've captured this screen and pasted it into your Word document, I want you to go ahead and repeat the command to ping the address 146.226.249.53. Just to prove that if you're reaching out from inside the machine, out through the firewall, everything still works. We're going to press Control C, and now we're going to Use SSH to connect to PG Book. That's the name of the account at 
Now, when you connect, you're not likely to get a password prompt right away. It may ask you, it may give you something about a key and say that it can't verify or the key is invalid or something like this. It'll ask you if you should continue to connect and it'll ask you to type in YES in lowercase and enter. You should do that. In fact, uh, yep, that was on a different screen, but uh, I'll share a prompt with you in the assignment document so you know. If it asks you, should you continue, answer YES. Now I'm going to enter the same password prompt that I'm used to using for my, my own machine, right? PG book, all lowercase. And now you have a login prompt. The thing that you need to understand, though, is that you're connected through this machine, not through your own machine. And it'll tell you when the last login was. There's a good chance that somebody else may have logged in a few minutes before you did. What I want you to do once you're in here is I want you to CD space mod two solutions. And, uh, wait a second. Sorry, that was uh, CD space mod two solution. So, uh, yeah, it says no such directory. I'm going to backspace over that mod two solution. You want to make sure that you're in mod two solution on the remote sh machine using the SSH connection. And what I want you to do is to make a directory for yourself within the mod two solution folder. Now, you don't get credit for this section unless I see your first initial and your last name. So you're going to type in MKDIR space your first initial and your last name with the first initial and the first letter of the last name capitalized, just like this. And then what I want you to do is I want you to do a, an LS space dash AL so that I can see your directory on the screen. You're going to take a screenshot in one second. The last thing you're going to do is type in exit. And it shows when you exit from there, after you've made your directory, it closes out the connection to 146.226.249.53. This is the last screenshot you need to capture the third and final screenshot of the fourth section of the second solution and you're done. This concludes solution two. Yay!